As the music industry went digital, the turntable seemed destined for the scrap heap. But this analog technology defied predictions and survived. With a sound that's arguably fuller and more natural than compressed digital formats, this retro technology is attracting new fans. In an age when media players are digitized and pocket-sized, the turntable plays on. The use of high-tech composites like carbon fiber puts a modern spin on this technology, bringing the record player into the 21st century. Production starts with a thick square of cast acrylic. The technician drills a hole in the center. It will be a reference point as he transforms this square into the turntable platter. A computerized tool cuts a circle shape out of the square. The disc then spins while another computer-guided tool enlarges the center hole to size it for the platter's main bearing. The next tool precisely cuts the surface of the disc to give it the correct angle. Computerized tools transform this small aluminum disc into the counterweight's main component. The counterweight balances the tone arm to keep the stylus in the groove of an LP. They slope the surface and cut holes for attachments and for installing the part. Finally, they cut a triangle out of the circle. This takes the part to its final shape and weight. From a flat disc to a precisely crafted counterweight. Next, the platform for the tone arm takes shape. It's designed to cradle all the parts at the end of the tone arm, including a cylindrical housing for a spring mechanism and an egg-shaped housing containing a bearing. A technician now assembles the tone arm, beginning with a tapered tube made of carbon fiber. It's a high-tech composite that's extremely stiff, so there should be no structural weakness in this crucial part. The technician threads a pre-assembled wiring loom through the arm tube. It's special wire for high-frequency transfer. These wires have been encased in copper to keep out ambient radiation that would interfere with the tone arm's operation. The carbon fiber tube also acts as a radiation shield. He mixes epoxy resin that he then dabs around the inner rim of the bearing housing, which has by now been equipped with the bearing. He inserts the tone arm tube into the housing. The tube adheres to the glue-coated rim. But before it totally bonds, the technician scrutinizes the alignment. He makes adjustments if needed, and then he'll clamp the assembly to allow the glue to cure. With the turntable tone arm now upright, he solders the wires that are protruding from the joint to external wiring for the amplifier. And once all the connections have been made, he inserts the wires into the metal joint. Ensconced in this joint, the connections are well protected and can't be pulled apart. He equips the main counterweight component with two thick steel beams for balance. He slides the counterweight onto a third beam, which has been installed in the egg-shaped housing. This completes the turntable tone arm. Next, they encase the electric motor in its metal housing. And they build the record deck. They mount the motor to the two-tiered deck, designed to absorb any vibration. The aluminum subchassis is next. They link it to the motor with a drive belt. Then they give the belt drive system a test spin to confirm that it runs smoothly. They now install the acrylic platter felt mat, and tone arm. With this turntable now fully assembled, it's time for the vinyl test. The record spins and the stylus traces the grooves. The analog sound fills the room, proving this technology stands the test of time. <laughs>